Hello, this is Mr. Chabry. Last time we went through my World 3, which was the cave level. Um, World 4 is going to be the forest level, and I really like this. Um, this is like such a cool aesthetic for a level. Um, in Super Mario World, I think my favorite area to get to was going to was the forest. Uh, but here, this is going to be um, floating down river. And this is more of a trickier level, because this one... Basically, you is an auto scroll level where you have to like get the timing right. Um, so hopefully, I can do this in one shot. I wanted to make it where the levels are getting a little bit tougher. Up to this point, the levels haven't been too tough. Um, if you persevere, it should be pretty simple. But in this one, you have to be very careful not to get ahead of yourself because down there you've got those giant cheap cheeps that just swim back and forth. Um, and you don't want to wait too long because if you like go above the screen, uh, you will die. So here you want to just time everything, be very careful. Um, and here you've got those Goombas waltzing around. You also have these um, rocky wrenches that pop up here and there. And you gotta be careful with their wrenches. Their wrenches are pretty small. Uh, but then this part right here I thought would be interesting. It's a little part where you have to uh, run up here and then go across this way. And originally I had it where you'd have to go across here, but I thought it'd be better to have a little gap here. Um, and if you, like, get it over here quick enough, there's actually a one-up mushroom that you can grab. And you just have these donuts here that leads you to the bottom of the level. Um, and now you've got this little section here. Um, it's a pretty simple section. If you can get up here, you can get an easy one-up. Um, but I wanted to make it where even if you fell in the water, uh, you can easily get to that flagpole. And if you saw on the left side of the screen before it starts scrolling, there was another um, power-up block which actually contained a, another one-up mushroom. So basically incentivizing people that want to, you know, try to get that. Uh, but yeah, that was called Downriver. Uh, here's a level, and you see these trees swaying back and forth. That might give you an idea of what kind of level this is. This is a level called Into the Tree Canopy. Um, and this one, um, I thought was pretty cool having these little trees here that you can climb. Uh, since that is like a super... Uh, Mario 3D World thing, so I decided to make a level with that where you can actually climb these trees. And in here you see like the trees fall down into the water. Originally I tried this with the overground theme, uh, but I mean it was nice and all, but I like how these actually look like trees instead of like the weird bell trees. Um, it does have water there, but you know I think of that more of, you know, it's giving someone a chance if they misjudge a jump, you know? Because you could try to jump up here and miss and not have to do all that section again. Plus there's a secret cat bell there. And that's going to make it easier to climb things. But down here is the actual um, meat and potatoes of this level. I wanted to make a vertical level where you just climb. And I wanted to make it where you have multiple ways of climbing. Over there you can do some wall jumps, you can climb the fence if you've got the cat power up, or just climb the tree. And on this tree you've got a a little fire flowers just in case something happens to you. Um, over here you got a little wall jump area. That actually leads up here to a one-up mushroom. So yeah, that's not really going to get you further in the level, but it's just like a little thing. And up here, if you really want to, you can grab that 50 coin piece. But this is the thing that you'll need to get up there. Unless you still have the cat power up, you can just climb up the wall. But if you don't have it, I wanted people to have like a another option of getting up there. And with that power-up, you can get up here pretty easily, too. You got a tree up there to climb. With that power-up, you can just fly up to the rest of the level. And we just go down here. And you can just grab the flag if you want, or you can do that little number <coughs> to get the one up. So yeah, I, I went with this aesthetic because it has more of a jungle feel, or more of a, you know, a forested area, versus the other one where it feels more like a plains. So this level is one that I really 
uh, really liked making. Um, I had a hard time deciding how to convey what it is. So you got this purple ooze and you got the purple mushroom in the water. I wanted to give the idea that the purple ooze is seep seeping into the water with this one. And I call this one Pollution Row. So this is a level where it's got the purple goop and you gotta be very quick. I put these coins up here so someone playing this for the first time will be like, oh coins, jump up here and give them an idea of how tall that actually gets so they know that they need to, you know, when they start going, they need to actually go and not wait around. But we've got like multiple things. If they want to, they can sit up here and wait it out or they can keep trying to go forward and uh, get a quicker time if they want. But I wanted to make it where even if you're not totally an expert at this game, you can still have a chance to do it. So even if you're going pretty slow, um, you can hit these coins to get some nice coins. These blocks, I mean, to get coins. Up here, I want to do something a little different than just, you know, a tree. So we got this little um, platform here that rotates. If you're not careful, you can end up in the purple ooze anyway, so. I'm going to start getting a little bit quicker. Um, but this part, I thought would be cool. It's like a little donut part where you have to pick it up. you got, like, flames there. Try to jump up there. Or you can try to wait it out on that donut. Make sure if you're on the donut, you continuously jump. I see where a lot of people die because they just stand there like that. Um, here is actually a Yoshi. So it gives you, like, a little extra uh, jump if you, like, start falling into the poison. You can jump off Yoshi to have a second chance, you know? And in this one, I have another uh, another branching path. So you can either continue going straight with the, you know, the level of this going up and down, or you can go into the pipe if you want to challenge yourself. I wanted to put this in there. So once you get up here, you can actually see that the purple ooze is a lot faster. So you do that, and it gives you an idea, oh, this is going to be a little bit tougher than if I stayed in that one area. <clears throat> and here we have little wigglers, too. There's wigglers in the other area. Both areas got wigglers. Um, but I, I decided to go in this one, because this is a little tougher. If you want to have an easier time, continue where you were. But this will give you more of a challenge, because it's faster. Um, here we've got these little claws. If you don't have a Yoshi, you can use that little... Uh, the little shell down there to float around but if you're doing that make sure you're not being held by a claw once the poison starts coming up or you're going to die anyway uh, but with that you can actually uh, you know sell right over to that block down there or you can just jump down there yourself if you want to uh, but here is the exit you can see both paths lead to the exit so you just jump into that that was pretty simple. You, like I said, you got two different paths. Uh, more of a, a test yourself path, and the path that I took. Yeah, and the other path is easier. Um, all right, so now I wanted to have like a little airship level. Of course, I want. I didn't want to put like the it, this one on the end because I had an idea of something else I want to do for the end of this level. Uh, so I just put a little airship here. And this one's called Boom Boom's Armada. So in this one, basically, Boom Boom has set up an armada to go after Mario and stop him. And this one, uh, the power-up I wanted to use in this one was the... I guess it's called the Squirrel Suit. I don't know exactly what this thing's called. But, like, this one I didn't really use that often. I want to get some use out of it. Um, here you've got a little um, chain chomp down there with wings. But once you get here... I want to have where the camera switches so it's not just going straight. And I have this little thing here to let you know, hey, maybe it'll start going up because you've got a random thing just sitting there. And you just got these little areas here. This one seems to actually have a really good, um, really good completion rate. You can grab that if you're up there quicker or you can just hit it and it'll fall down here. You got like two chances to grab that. I just got smacked. I got some like bullet bills here and stuff like that. We got some cannons to give it that airship feel. 
I want it to have the camera feel a little dynamic, so sometimes it'll speed up, and sometimes it'll, like, slow down. Once you get here, you got this power up if you need it, and you just jump in here. And like I said, this is Boom Boom's Armada, so you actually have to face Boom Boom here. To get through here, and you can, like, ground pound him if you want. Uh, kind of messed up there. Kind of mistimed that. Anyway, with that, you can just jump in there and exit right here. If you want to grab the top, you can actually um, wall jump off the back of the ship. So that way you can grab the top of the flagpole, get a quick one up. Alright, so... Um, I had an idea for a castle level that I wanted to do, and I went ahead and did it in this level. Um, so this is Looping Castle, so if you notice it's an auto-scroll castle. Um, here you just run across, and in the vein of, you know, the first Super Mario Brothers, uh, there's some castles that have multiple paths and you have to pick the right one. So I wanted to do a similar thing here. Um, and you see here, you've got a pipe here. If you went on the top, you'd have like a different, you see you got different paths that end up leading to a different exit. And you take it and see if it's the right one. Um, and as you see here, we have this little section here, so that way you're not just dead, because a lot of people that make these Mario Maker levels probably just have a place where you're just dead, can't do anything about it. I don't like making levels like that. If you make a mistake, I want to make it where you can actually get back into it and try again without, you know taking a loss but you see there like the paths all lead back to that little section um, you come here and you just go across here and for this one the correct exit is actually the bottom one the door um, a little secret is you can't really warp have two doors from s different sections to connect so even though I have a door sitting there in that one room uh, it actually doesn't connect to the other area it's just there to throw people off when they see that they're like oh maybe it's not the one with the door maybe I need to try the one with the other pipe but this one is also I'm gonna just tell you guys this one's also the bottom one too uh, you can actually jump up there if you have second thoughts but up there is actually the wrong one I just put that there just in case people are like oh I'll try that uh, we've got like this fire bar here. We got little lava bubbles um, and the door like I said the door is always the correct exit And we got like a boss level here um, And you just jump right in there and you come out here to face the Koopaling And this one This guy's actually the first Koopaling you fight in Super Mario Bros 3 but he has like a different behavior than the one that I decided to use for my first Koopaling battle. Um, this one jumps when he gets hit. Or actually he jumps across the stage. Uh, the other one actually just walks across. So I thought, you know, let's go with this one for this level. Have it where they jump across there and you have to like time your jumps. Make sure you hit them on the head. Here you have this little... Uh, U1 section, I don't know what to call it, transition. Uh, you can jump up here to grab a 1-up if you wish. You don't have to. And with that, that is World 4. So if you like World 4, let me know in the comments what you think about my Mario Maker level. Um, I'll show you real quick what World 5 looks like, and then next time we'll play that one. Like I said, this is still in... I'm still creating this, so so I might do some changes here or there. Um, I haven't completely finished it. This is actually the last one I made. So next time I'm going to show you guys my World 5. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe.